And in today's video on the video series, how to build your food truck with me, Frank Baltiers, we're gonna be talking about the electrical. We're gonna do a quick overview on the electrical and how, how I ran it in my food truck, which is rolling burritos. It was one of the first food trucks that I built. I On the electrical, it's different on a mobile trailer than it is on a brick and mortar restaurant. I have made various electrical videos and hopefully they have been a progression, a little bit better of how the electrical is set up in this food truck. So again, we're gonna cover that because somebody asked a question from my ebook. So I do have an ebook available, just so you guys know, it's an ebook or a spreadsheet. There's a combo, you can buy the spreadsheet by themselves or you can buy the ebook. The spreadsheet I did have at one point available for free. So if you guys see one of the older videos from when I filmed maybe like in 2020, 2021, right around there, I used to give it away for free. I no longer do, just so we're clear. And the ebook is nothing more than a con a main point of all the videos put together. I kind of put them in one central point. Any information that is available in that ebook is available for free on all the YouTube videos that I put out here. The only value that that ebook gives you is one, access to me. So you can ask me questions, you can email me, and I will make private videos for you explaining like certain things that you have, which is the reason why I'm doing this video. I made a specific one for a gentleman about the electrical. Now I'm making it more in depth. Uh, maybe I missed something. Uh, and also, what else am I covering there? That, like I said, oh, the spreadsheet comes with the ebook. But again, that's just want to make that disclaimer. All the information that you find on the ebook can be found for free. So if you guys do all your homework, you guys can do it all yourself, or you can just take the shortcut and buy the ebook. It's totally up to you. I'll put in the, the description, the link in the description so you guys can purchase if you guys want to. But let's get started right here. The question that I had from the electrical was, how did you run it, number one, and can I get 240 based on the setup that you have? So I'm gonna show you here right now, that way you guys can see it exactly. So this is my Reliance generator inlet box that I have here. This is a 30 amp one. This is, like I said, one of the first food trucks that I ever built. The one that I recommend now is a 50 amp, which this is a 30 amp plug right here. This is a little extension cord that I make that you can plug into your house or your commissary, wherever it is. And then you can also, and you know, power it up without having to turn on your generator. This is a 50 amp plug. We're not really covering plugs today. I just want to show you the difference. This one's a little bit beefier, obviously, because it's 50 amps. This is 30. What I want to show you is this. So I take my Lennox 9-in-1, this is one of the best screwdrivers ever, and all these products that I have here and that I show you, I put them on my Amazon paid affiliate links. So you guys wanna support the channel, you guys can purchase from my Amazon paid affiliate links, and I do support, I do appreciate the support that you guys do when you guys buy certain things, especially this guy right here. I have seven of these guys, because I keep them everywhere in the house, in my car, in my tool bag, everywhere, because they are they come in handy quite a bit. So. As I mentioned, this is my Reliance 30 amp plug. And if we come here, I'm gonna show you, there's, there's no power right now to this, so you don't have to worry about me shocking myself. I, I only have my food truck set up for 120 power, 120 volts. If you wanna get 240 volts, you would buy a, this is an SOOW cable, which is more like an outdoor cable. If you go to like a carnival, you usually see them on the ground because they power up different rides and things like that, amusements at a carnival. So it's kind of the same setup. It has a really thick jacket. And I'm gonna show you under the trailer right now how I have it ran. But if you see here, it only has one power, which is the black wire. And it has one white, which is the neutral wire. And it also has the ground wire. So that's how I get 120 power. If I wanted 240 power, then I would use this other side right here, which it has an X. Uh, marked right here so it has an x y and a w i don't know if you guys can really see that but it has an x for one one leg a y for the second leg a w and the g for the ground so just so you guys see that this one's set up for 120 because i do not need 240 in my specific trailer um and this this one particularly is 10 gauge wire 10 gauge wire handles 30 amps if you guys want to push 50 amps then you go to six gauge wire. It's a lot thicker, but you can handle obviously a lot more power. A question that I get quite a bit, as I mentioned, a food truck is very different than a brick and mortar when it comes to electrical. You cannot, well you can, technically you can, but it's not easy to do 
to have a ground rod because a lot of people say, don't you put a ground rod? A ground rod, yes, you do use it in your house. Some of the generators are self-grounding as they call them self-grounding. But when it comes to a trailer, I would find it very difficult to be putting a ground rod everywhere that you go if you are moving to different places. If, like I went to Dodge City, Kansas, where is where I, where I grew up, I went to high school in Dodge City, Kansas. They have a lot of food trucks out there that are positioned in one stationary spot. Then I definitely would recommend you put a ground rod so then you can ground your electrical. So that's how this puppy is. Let me show you the electrical box really fast and how you would wire it to be 240. And that'll give you the answers, hopefully, of wiring it 240 or 120. But let me take you down here and I'm gonna show you how I have my uh, wire ran from here to the breaker panel. So if you guys see right here from that box that you see there, I have that wire ran and it runs all the way to the back of the trailer. If you can see, I just kind of snug it up there and it runs all the way back there. And that's how I have this wire ran. I just kind of make it nice and tidy. That way it doesn't fall. You put some straps on there, that way it holds it up. So hopefully that helps you out when you ask, how do you run it to the back of the trailer? Just like that. And then you, like I said, you just snug these up with some zip ties, very heavy duty zip ties right here. And you find those at the electrical section at Home Depot. They actually make some that I've used that have a rubber jacket. So if you can buy the ones with the rubber jacket, that'll be a little bit better. Again, you can find those at Home Depot in the electrical section. I didn't turn the lights on in my trailer because I'm, I'm only going to be here for a little bit as we finish up this video. Again, if you guys have questions or comments, drop them in the, in the comment section. And I look at them and I answer each and every one myself. And based on those, I make different videos if they get asked enough. So hopefully it helps you out. Again, I'm Frank Baltieres and I show you how to build food trucks from scratch. So right here... When it comes to the electrical box, if you want 240 power, I took the box off just so you guys know. So what I do is I run my home runs and then I connect them here to my little wire nut. And from that wire nut, I bring it over here to the breaker. I don't know if you guys can see that. So I connect all my home runs into this little wire nut and then they come over here to one of my breakers so that way I don't double tap them. This one right here is specific only for my food warmer. A food warmer handles a lot of power so you want to make sure that you have its own home run for that one all right but what i do is i bring that black cable that you guys saw from underneath the the trailer and i bring it right up here through this little hole on the breaker panel and then i wrap it around and these lugs up here again don't forget there's no power here so i'm not going to shock myself you connect to one leg if you want 240 power you would have a wire on both of these terminals and then you can see how let me take this breaker off right here they just pop right in, just so you guys know. A breaker just goes just like that, and that's how you get a power. It's something that you would have in your house. There's nothing different. So on here to get the 240 power, what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect one of the power. Remember from the plug from the outside, I showed you how it's connected to the Y. We're gonna connect it here to one leg, and if you wanted 240, you would connect it to the other leg. What I was mentioning is, you see how this leg connects here? It has like almost like a little plastic, and it goes here and it goes there. And then this one goes here and it goes, sorry, it goes here and it goes there. So that's how you get 240 power is when you have two of them combined and you have a double breaker, right? It would be two breakers like this combined. You know, it's not exactly like this because you want them to have a, uh, a, co a common trip. So they have a metal piece between them. So they trip at the same time. That's what makes it 240, something like this. Something you would have for like your air conditioner in your house. But if you want 120 power, this is how I have it in my trailer. I skip a space and that's what gives me the 120 power. So hopefully that helps you out when you have the question of do I, how do I connect 240 if I need it for like a, usually people use it for an espresso, mach, espresso machine, uh, slushy machine, uh, also some food warmers can be 240. So the many things that can be 240 if you need it, cooking equipment as well. I don't really recommend cooking equipment to be electrical because it uses a lot of electricity and you need a humongous generator. That's just my personal opinion. But if you have no choice, then use electrical. I love to use the my propane ones because they're easier to use. It is easy to fill up the propane tanks. Again, I'm going to do this video tomorrow in Spanish. So if you guys want to see this video in Spanish, make sure that you check that out either today, or, sorry, tomorrow or, or I know this week I will do it. Uh, so I don't want to promise anything, but tomorrow or the next day, but this week definitely we will have a Spanish video for everybody that que habla español. So again, Frank Baltiers on how to build your food truck. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing all the videos. We'll see you in the next one.